Look, ah, Milton, don't forget you gotta give me. You want to press light there right away? I know this thing that on um, mute with it. You know why? Really? No, because you put y'all in run the, 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 you gotta run the intro first. Okay, good. So, Peter, wait, I don't go live. Hello, Guyana. A pleasant Friday evening to you. Um, it is the sixth day in the tenth month of the year 2023. So I want to. Tonight's topic will focus on um, PPP C regime has no shame part two. Um, so tonight. Um, from destiny to prosperity by my the honorable Raphael Fortman, former minister of the natural resources ministry and also he was the former speaker of the house former chairman and also leader of the alliance for change party but you know later down in the program i will put more emphasis on tonight's topic but i just want to Extend birth anniversary greetings to those of you who are having a birthday today. Um, so I pray that Almighty God continue to shower His blessings upon you so that you can have strength um, to see many more years to come. And for those of you who are celebrating a wedding anniversary also, I want to take this opportunity in extending best wishes to you and and your partner so may you both grow in strength and happiness for a long marriage life um, I also want to extend condolences to those of you who who have lost a loved one and um, or you know of someone close to you who might have lost a loved one too my deepest condolences to those persons and I pray that Almighty God will continue to strengthen you so that you can um, you can be encouraged right I also want to remind viewers and listeners that GCOM registration, continuous registration continues at the Ghana Elections Commission. And um, you know, we are in the 10th month and the last day for continuous registration is on the 30th day of November, 2023. And as I have been encouraging on previous programs, it is the responsibility of us to get ourselves registered if we know of persons who will attain the age of 14 years by december 31st 2023 they too can be registered during this process 
and um, for those of you who are 18 years and over you can also um, get registered because it's from 18 years and over that requires you to or el to you're eligible to vote right so um, an ID card is not for the sole purpose of voting but it is also to help persons to you know transact personal business um, whether it's a job or any other business of, 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 of theirs so that's one for GCOM I think sometime last week I encourage persons to partner with me so that I can make available three laptops for school age children in my constituency and that request is still open and for those of you who would like to contribute to such an initiative I ask you to make contact with me 623-6032 is my number so I repeat that 623-6032 um, so I'm going to move right into tonight's topic it's me again I'm soloing all for the last couple of days but um, you know I'm capable and capable to do so because you know, I try to keep myself abreast on matters of national importance so whenever I come before you through these lens I come well informed and with uh, accurate information and also to provide you with what is happening so just before I, I get into tonight's topic substantively allow me this opportunity to share with you on this issue of continuous blackout that our nation find itself under the People's Progressive Party you know an incompetent bunch of people who has no plan to really move this sector in a positive direction just last tuesday while i was here i did share with you a letter an extensive letter written by my colleague honorable david patterson mp who had responsibility for the energy sector through the ministry of public infrastructure as it once named and you know that under the coalition government the sector the energy sector was moving in a positive direction and for a matter of fact i will say all the sectors because we tend to forget at times that the People's Progressive Party Civic prior to May 2015 they were in government for 23 years 23 years and history would remind us that in those 23 years we had continuous blackouts in those 23 years we know that there were corruption at the Ghana Power and Light um in, in those 23 years we know for a fact that the then ceo the, the the ceo just before the change in government mr baro dindial his the board the then board that he was reporting to they had lost all confidence in him because of him being visionless and he lacks the managerial skills you know to move the sector forward and we know that under him we had massive we had pervasive um 
corruption. And you would recall, I think it was on the GPL, we had someone who absconded from this country in excess of 27, I think it's 27 million dollars under corrupt practices. And you know that the coalition government was attempting to have him return so he could have been prosecuted. So, fast track to 2023, or just before 2023, we were told, this entire nation was told that with the Amila Falls coming on stream, blackout will be a thing of the past but you know what they're not saying to us of which we will remind you because i think it is public knowledge out there about this whole amila arrangement involving um funds from norway and um also we know there was this contractor mr flip mutilal who really who really flipped indeed because this gentleman had no idea of of building hydro electric um systems this individual had no idea of even being a contractor whether building buildings or otherwise but we must understand the people we are dealing with and who are governing this nation it's a set of people who have no regards for functioning authority they have no regards for systems they have no regards for rules so everything is about family friends favorites and i noticed my colleague um Sherrod duncan i think added another f flatters you know flatters so this is what is happening in our country so what do we have today we are faced with daily blackouts in the country and rather than these people accepting their incompetence and ineptness they're now trying to throw everything at the feet of the coalition but as I said before, on Tuesday last, I read a letter to the editor that was done by my colleague, David Patterson, on the, I think it's the 27th of March, 2021, which he captioned, what plan? What plan? Mm. And he detailed the um give a chronological layout of what we in what was there prior to may 2015 what we inherited in 2015 and what we did as a coalition government between may 2015 up to um august 2020 i would say up to july of 2020 because we demitted office on the 2nd of august 2020 again despite the information being put out there you still had uh Irfan ali and barajagdio speaking and spewing the lies but i come to realize that these people just can't help themselves they believe that all Guyanese are fools. They believe that we cannot comprehend. They believe that everything they put out there, Guyanese will swallow. Well, I want to say to, my, to you, my wonderful viewers out there, that the only thing the PPP is giving us is the poisonous pill. pill. So we have to be very mindful when we, when we swallow in such a such a pill because we cannot trust these people they must never be trusted because they believe in order to maintain political power 
it has to come with lies and i don't even think they believe themselves whenever they speak so just today a letter was done by the former chairman of um, the board the gpl board and i want to take some time to share what he had to say in today's kaichor newspaper in the editorial um, section and this is the headline carried in the letter column is this a conspiracy to deceive i repeat is this a conspiracy to deceive and this is mr rod lucas it's a, he's a i think a lecturer out at the university of Guyana. he's an economist by profession and i think the, the name is well known out there so this is what mr lucas had to share today dear editor try as one might to positively evaluate the work of the government it always finds ways to contradict itself and reinforce negative views of its performance the latest incident concerns the attempts to top of top leaders of the government to deflect blame for the nation's electricity woes from themselves to the APNU AFC coalition or the coalition government. One statement in a press release from DPI that caught my attention reads, and he quotes here, the now opposition referring to us, the APNU, during its 2015 to 2020 tenure did not reinvest in new capacity, unquote. When a similar effort to blame the coalition government came from the mouth of the prime minister previously, I put it down to politicking and the privilege of free speech. I have chosen to break my silence on this occasion, since the Ali government seems to have no level of shame in making specious claims that can easily be disproved. Further to the information provided by former Minister David Patterson, which covered the entire tenure of the coalition that contradicts the bogus claims of the Ali government, I feel the, necess the, 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 the necessity to expose what appears to be conspiracy of deception by the Ali government. Since I had some involvement with gpl at the policy level in addressing the spurious claim of the government it is important to point out that the electricity sector reform act and gpl's license require that it produce a five-year development and expansion plan this plan must be adjusted annually on a rolling basis the plan is a tool for action measuring performance and holding GPL accountable to the delivery of service promised to the people of the country. I became involved with GPL during the period May 2019 and August 2020. When I got there, the 2017, I want you to listen to me carefully, the 2017 to 2021, and 2019 to 2023 plans were already in place. While I was there, the 2020 to 2024 plan was developed. A review of this latter plan would show that we had short term, medium term, and long-term traditional and renewable energy proposals for addressing the electricity needs of this country. This submission will deal only with traditional energy generation. It should not be difficult for the government to make that plan available to the public so that it can understand what the coalition government had in store for them. Well, my brothers and sisters in TV land, you know no way 
no way the people's progressive party civic will bring this pl plan um, of the coalition to the public's attention because remember their mantra is to kill everything that the coalition did to make us look like the good bo the bad boys and they're the good boys they and, and you will see it because they constantly through their through their um one man one man press um one man press conference this is the one that is he is the one that is be touting oh the coalition did nothing for five years well the facts are before you the facts are before you my brothers and sisters and you must be able to judge who were the better swords of your country right in government if this government if the government has difficulty making the 2020 to 2024 plan available to the public i am willing to assist the media in gaining access to it if it has an interest in letting Guyanese know the truth about the matter the short-term proposals of the plan included one installation of a four to six point five megawatt of power in 2020 and in 2021 we were going to increase it by a 55.2 55.2 so we will, we would have moved from for the 6.5 to 55.2 in 2021 positioning gpl to add in total 101.7 megawatts from new investments by 2021 the medium term proposal included installation of an additional 120 megawatts of power starting in 2022 which meant that by 2023 guyana would have had 221.7 megawatt of generating capacity from new investments and not the 180 megawatt that the government is now presiding over so you would see since they came into government they haven't done anything but and they haven't even show us or showed us a plan how they intend to increase the, the, the megawatts uh, in electricity to make it stable and reliable for Guyanese. They're yet to show us that. But we're out of government and we can still share with you what we had planned out for the energy sector. May I continue? The full implementation of our plan would have added an additional 180 megawatt of power starting in 2025 and bringing the total new investment to 424 megawatt no later than 2026 let ppp show us what they got for 2026 what is their plan for 2025 and what is their plan for 2024 and also in 2023 because if they had a proper plan we would not have been faced with continuous blackouts in this country and the blame game going the blame game going but they don't know better that was the direction in which we were moving when i was chairman of gpl these proposed new investments were driven by three factors namely the anticipated level of economic activity stemming from oil becoming part of Guyana's production structure secondly the domestic and foreign invest investment interest that the country was attracting and thirdly the interest which many self-generating users were showing in returning to the national grid it should be emphasized here that our plan anticipated the return of self generators to the national grid without them having to be taxed the Ali government is trying to make this look as if it was an unanticipated development it is not editor many might recall my pledge to make blackouts a thing of the past before my resignation gpl was on its way to implementing the above plans that were intended to make that promise a reality as stated before 
our short plan for 2020 was to install four to six megawatt of new four to six megawatt of new power as we were gearing up to do that COVID-19 was emerging as a threat it was only because of strategic thinking foresight by GPL's team and understanding of the risk by the AP and UFC government that we were able to get ahead of the COVID-19 problem and put GPL in a position to install the 46 megawatt of new generating capacity at Garden of Eden before the end of 2020. At the time of my departure in August 2020, a contractor installed the 46.5 megawatt of power had already been signed. The civil works to accommodate the generators were in an advanced stage of implementation and the generators were already on the way to Guyana. It should be clear to Guyanese from the foregoing that the investment in the 46.5 megawatt of new power at a contract cost of US 50 million was added under the coalition administration in contradiction to what appears to be a deliberate attempt by the current government to mislead the citizens of this country and to hide its own failings to emphasize the for the forward thinking that attended the investment at garden of eden let it be known that the new generators were purchased with the, with the intention of using either gas or oil. The public should therefore understand that GPL is already positioned since 2020 to use gas as its energy source. If the government were to run a gas pipeline to the Garden of Eden generating, generating station with minor adjustments, a gas to show project would already be in existence in Guyana. One must therefore ponder the motive of this government to clumsily foist blame on the coalition for the predicament for the predicament in which it now finds itself. The government does not even seem to realize how silly and deceitful it comes across in making these false statements. Guyanese must be surprised to discover that a government that came to power boasting that it had many transformative pro um, projects in hand and it knew what it was doing was unaware that it needed to ensure that the energy supply was adequate instead of getting busy doing its own electricity needs assessment as required by law. It became comfortable with what AP and UFC had already done and went off on wild jaunts with all sorts of projects of new direct benefits to the people of this country. It had three years to continue the work of the coalition and instead of doing that, it took its eye off the ball. Now that it has been caught with its pants down, it is hustling to blame AP and UFC for the government to be scrambling now to invest in a mere 30 megawatt of power towards the end of 2023 tells me that it would have ignored any development plans that GPL would have prepared for 2021 to 2025, 2022 to 2026 and 2023 to 2027. The media should ask GPL if it prepared those plans and if the government took account of them since taking office. Respectfully, Raul Lucas. So, what I've just shared here, though it's lengthy, right? At least Mr. Raul Lucas would have made the point that the coalition government had a robust electric um, electricity plan or energy plan in place to move Guyana forward. I've just read in that letter um, 
gradually he showed how we would have increased um, the megawatt per hour every year but we have an administration a current administration whose focus is more on ensuring one that they got their friends the families and whoever at the hem of that um, company because as it is it has been reported to, to, to us that that Baradin Dial who is currently ill right apparently he has been replaced by a brother of a sitting minister in government and apparently because we're yet to see if that is true we're yet to see um, or if he's there we're yet to see this gentleman's credentials what would have what would have uh, whether he fit the the requirements for being the CEO of the power company or a main power company in this country we know that in 20 I think it's 2016 2017 we went out both locally and internationally looking for the best looking for the best candidate to head the Ghana Power and Light Incorporation and by way of open advertisement we were able to employ Mr. Gordon Albert, a Jamaican by birth, who was heading one of the major power companies there in, in Jamaica, came here and he gave of his best. It wasn't politically motivated. The coalition didn't look for friends, family, the favorites and the flatters to put into office or to put into key positions right because if you really want to move the process move this country forward we must be able to have the right set of people in place right to give of their best their experiences and everything to improve the uh, the company so i trust that after reading mr raw lucas's letter in today's kaicho news that the likes of Barajagdio and Air Finale will be able to stop fooling the people of this country because the minute they open their mouths, we will hit them with the facts and we will hit them with the truth. And you know what is hurtful? Is that though, though you have the president, you have two ministers two ministers who are actually um, responsible for the Ministry of Public Works Guan Ejil, Bishop Guan Ejil and also Mr. Diodat Indar and for the life of me with all this that we have been experiencing over the last couple of days not one word not one word these ministers haven't come out to say but you got the likes of mr barra jagdio and Efren ali coming out and castigating blaming the coalition government for their failures can you imagine that we came in in 26 in 2015 may and we try cleaning up their mess the, the incompetencies that that they would have left we tried cleaning it up gradually. We had the sector, the energy sector moving at a smooth um, pace. And you know blackout was a thing of the past under the coalition government. Because why? We had a plan. We had competent people heading the energy sector. We had competent people as directors of the board. You understand me and the staff the staff we didn't politicize the cooperation but the staff they were able to work without political direction because you know why they're the technical people and once they get the policy direction you just leave them to function in in in, in the capacity 
and that is what was done so you got these two gentlemen i doubt whether they understand what is happening at the power company but they're coming out to blame the apnu afc government and i want to say it too i want to say it too you the viewers that that we must give credit where credit is due i have five minutes remaining to my program time because it was a late start but i thought the operator would have given me back my time but uh be it that it may good all right so so i've just completed um gpl and i just want to publicly applaud david patterson for the foresight the vision and the team there at public infrastructure then um even the then board uh, board of directors at gpl for the work that they would have put in from may 2016 to july um, 2020 to move this sector in a positive direction um quickly i want to go to tonight's topic because i know it's probably i'll have to run it over to next week program but this is part two on the ppp c regime has no shame and i want to touch on this on this 214 us million dollars uh cost recovery after audit and you know we have heard so much out there about this missing 214 million which eventually went down to 11 million us then eventually went down to 3 million us for weeks at press conferences you know different ones writing in the print media asking for the the for barajadio to come clean regarding this matter you know the game blame again you know the game the, the, the blame game sorry again started now public servants are now put at the firing squad right and just all couple of weeks ago you weren't hearing much on this matter because and i guess it's because of public pressure coming down on the government that this morning we all woke up to a statement by the individual who heads that ministry vikram barat you haven't been hearing much or you haven't been hearing from vikram at all regarding the whole operations of our petroleum uh, unit there at the Ministry of Natural Resources, excuse me. But this morning, he woke up, we woke up to a statement, and in that statement, one Mr. Bobby uh, Gosai Jr., some, the head of the petroleum unit at Natural Resources, <laughs> it seems to be the fall guy who is now you know going to take the rap and um according to the minister mr vikram is that this gentleman will be disciplined now we know how the people people's progressive party works and in no way even even let us say for instance if the public servant did act he couldn't act on his own accord he had to act on direction political direction because we know the people's progressive party civic they're very manipulative and we know if you don't do their bidding what will come after so mr gosai is now faced with perhaps disciplinary action hanging over his head and many commentators i think many views expressed by way of social media earlier today will show that this guy is just being used as the scapegoat and we know they're gonna move gosai from that ministry and have him post to some other uh, ministry 
very discreetly and and uh, you know have him concealed there because i guess he might have agreed with whatever you know they offer him you know uh, whatever they might have offered him must he decided that well look this is the better way out so as to bring some nullity to this whole issue surrounding this 214 million dollars well we have to continue to expose where the goose i accept where the goose i is the is the scapegoat where the goose i is the the, the fall man where the goose whatever whatever goose i agree to we will continue to have this particular issue remain at the front door now and i like to say they like to tell people about the 18 million us dollars but you know what is going to happen we come next week i will analyze in that book from destiny to prosperity by Raphael trotman what happened today to the signing bonus because soon as you soon as they open them out they could tell you about the 18 million signing bonus and in that book mr Raphael trotman was able to explain how the signing bonus came about that's one two how the monies were actually handed over not to know government minister as they want you to believe and totally where this money went and what it was utilized for as i said before is for the 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 um the venezuela controversy guyana and the venezuela controversy some money the 15 million us went to that to the ice for the payment of the to the icj and also three million us was set aside to build capacity train young people in the oil and gas sector so come next week i will and uh, look at you know analyze some aspect of this book so that at least you the Guyanese citizen must be able to decipher truth from lies so there's no way the ministers in the coalition government stole us 18 million dollars bonus right those monies were put in a special account they reserve um, account and the bank of the governor the bank the governor for bank of guyana dr gobin ganga fully aware as to the entire transaction right and if indeed this 18 million went missing why is it that rafael trotman and at Ferguson and all the other ministers who served in government. Why is it that we're not investigated? Because there's nothing to investigate. But because of how the coalition was governing, they wanted you, the Guyanese, to believe that we, as I said earlier, are the bad guys. We are not nothing. We corrupt, we this and all manner of things. But still yet then they are fully aware of where the 80 million bonus is because how you how we since they came into government we had several hearings at the ic at the icj the the international court of justice and obviously monies had to be paid so where the monies come from so it's the very 80 million that they're claiming we stole or we have concealed it it is the very sums that they have, they're paying this um the cold cost to. so we have to be very mindful of what we are hearing from these people and guyanese you had a taste of the pppc prior to may 25th 15 and you know it was bad business all the, all the way you know of the corruption you know the nepotism i don't need to remind you so what you're seeing now since the return is just a repeat of what we know prior to may 2015. so come next week i gonna set aside part three 
of this pro this program will have part three the topic will be part three on the ppp regime has no shape because the truth must be told we have to confront the lies and let you the people know what 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 was done with the 18 million signing bonus and we have to continue to question where is our 214 million us dollars and i believe because i think today earlier today the apnu had a press conference and also the afc held their press conference and i can tell you the call is for barrett jack Dio and vikram barrett to be jailed they both must face jail because up to now we are not satisfied with the explanations given surrounding this 214 million us dollars after cost cost recovery audit so this is all the time i have my brothers and sisters and i want to take this opportunity in wishing you the very best for the weekend i also want to thank you for joining me for another episode of let's talk with Anne. i do look forward to you joining me next wednesday next wednesday at seven for another episode let's talk with Anit. so may god continue to bless you may god continue to bless your beautiful family and may god continue to bless our beautiful nation guyana tata -ta.